glorious day to be alive in Jesus. I am Angela Madden. I'm here with Pastor J. Anthony Gilbert. Welcome to Unscripted Faith. Yeah, I'm so excited. It's good to be with you as well. We've got Tim Hatch from Tim Hatch Live. Let's go. Just started here on Cornerstone not too long ago. So if we're feeling spiritually empty, we're looking for joy and purpose, not looking for the things in the world, he's going to have a great interview for us. I'm excited to sit down and talk with him. Yeah, you know, I good. think that I think all of that he brings to the table for Cornerstone is beautiful. And today is going to be no different. That's right. We also have Pastor Dave DiDonato in the house. We are so excited. He has a call on his heart for the urgent gospel in this hour for our region and for this nation and I'm excited to sit down and talk with him. You know, I got a chance to meet him for the first time and uh, I like him already. Yes. I like him already. He's yes. going to be a bad mamma jamma to have on here. So it's going to be really good. And so the question we have to ask is, is your life currently feeling fulfilling? Yes. If it's not, then listen, our next guest is going to be a blessing to you because you're probably turning to all the wrong sources. After all, the world's definition of happiness and success will eventually only lead you to feeling empty inside. Pastor Tim Hatch is getting ready to join us. And we're going to have a deep conversation about attaining true joy and purpose, especially for anyone who may be feeling overwhelmed or disconnected. So yes. let's head on over here yes. to see uh, Pastor Tim and what he's going to share with us today. It's so great to have you with us, Pastor Tim. God bless you, man of God. It's so great to be with you. God bless you both. I am so glad to be with both of you and uh, your program being on the channel is a wonderful privilege to bring the gospel to the network and we're looking forward to a great relationship with you guys. Well, tell us a little bit about what's happening in your world because we know you're down there in Tampa and trying to avoid the disaster that's going on. How are you all doing down there? We're holding strong. We have to do some cleanup from Helene, and, we, and now we have to do some buttoning up for the incoming Milton. So we're praying, believing the God who stills the storms is able to still the storm for us down here, because I don't know if the area can handle another bad storm surge. So pray for us if you're thinking about it at any time between now and the uh, hitting impact moment. I think it's on Wednesday night. Oh, wow. But well, we'll definitely be praying for you guys, and we know that God's going to divert that storm in the name of Amen. Jesus. I got a friend of mine that's down there as well, uh, a pastor friend. His name is Pastor Liddell Cole. I don't know if you know him or not, but he's got a great church mm -hmm. down there. Uh, also, another gentleman that's been down there is uh, Dr. Keenan Bridges, who has also been down there. So all of these people we need to be praying for yeah. that God would yeah, just bless absolutely. them. Well, tell us a little bit about what's going on in your book here. So yeah, it's called Ending Emptiness. It was uh, a labor of love and I guess you could say frustration with the results of the COVID-19 pandemic. The lockdowns proved to be a failure. Um, it really created just a, a whole new pandemic of loneliness and emptiness, suicidal ideation, so many mental and emotional problems. And America really doesn't have the same problems as the ancient world and much of the modern world where we're struggling to get by day by day financially. Although some people are, most of us have more than one change of clothes. Most of us have a car. Most of us have a place to lay down that's comfortable at night. What we're struggling with is the things that money cannot buy, that sense of satisfaction, that sense of fullness of life, that sense that I have a purpose, I have a meaning to my existence. And young people are not being served well by our current educational system in this regard, by our current media and entertainment systems, and even by the health systems. You know, the simple solution, go to the doctor, get a prescription, pop the pill, you'll feel better. It doesn't work for so many young people. And let us not discount the impact of the pharmaceutical industry upon our future, upon our finances, and upon our whole existence. We've got to answer these questions, these internal spiritual questions, with the one who made us, with his answers. And his answers are found, obviously, we all know this, in the scriptures. And he gives us examples like so Solomon, who I write about in this book, from the book of Ecclesiastes, about having this capacity to live a life where you can press a button, you can make a phone call and you can have food delivered to your house, have somebody pick you up, drive you to the airport, go on some kind of, you know, adventure personally, do all of that and still come back and say, is that all life is about? And is, there's so much more and young people need to hear about it, especially now. Wow, I think that's so true. And I, I, it is probably one of the biggest epidemics that we face in America is this idea of a continual search for something outside that doesn't yeah. necessarily fulfill. Tell us a little bit about how did you come to know Jesus and know him as the satisfier of your soul? 
Yeah, well, I was uh, born because my parents experienced a uh, Holy Spirit revival in their own personal life. My mother was raised by an Italian Pentecostal preacher, walked away from the faith, got married, had two children. And then they decided to attend this um, Episcopalian church with a spirit-filled priest at the time. This is back in the 70s. And he was leading people to Christ. People were getting born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, my father included. And they just had a radical revolution in their lives. And then they decided to have another child. And my mother prayed the, Sam, the, the uh, Hannah prayer from 1 Samuel 1. Lord, if you give me a son, because she came from a deep Italian family. If you keep, give me a son, she had two daughters, I'll give him to your purposes all the days of his life. Now, she never told me that. She never told me that at all. And um, I was born, obviously, a, a male. <laughs> uh, the Lord called me into ministry when I was very young. I knew it from 13 years old. I was going to pastor churches. I was going to plant churches. I was going to uh, minister the word. And my mother fought me tooth and nail. She did not want that to be a part of my life. But God got a hold of her heart, changed her heart. And here I am, years later, still in the ministry, pastoring a multi-site church, writing books, doing podcasts, trying to change this generation in my day so that God's will can be done here on this earth as it is in heaven. And that's, that's really the story of my life. Well, you know, Tim, you're talking about purpose and things along that line. It sounds like you're walking in yours. I don't know about you, but I really believe a lot of times we're unfulfilled because we don't find the purpose that God's called us to walk in. And the reason why I'm mentioning this is because you have a great television show that's launching here at Cornerstone, and I believe that's part of your purpose and your call. Tell us a little bit about uh, Tim Hatch Live and what's been happening on there, what people can expect. Yeah, Tim Hatch Live is uh, the ministry of the word uh, from the pulpit of my church. It's called Waters Church. It's one church with seven locations in New England, South Carolina, Florida. We also have a mission slash church organization in Guatemala and in Peru. Wow. So we're right up and down the Americas by God's grace. Lots of incredible leaders. And so I'm preaching on Sunday morning. We're taking those messages, putting them out, making sure that people are hearing the word of God I believe the Word of God is living and active, and it is sharper than any two-edged sword. It's going to pierce. Someone needs to hear it on Cornerstone. Someone needs to hear that there's life that is in Christ that is beyond what this material world can offer us. And whether we're up or down, as Paul says in Philippians 4, whether we're rich or poor, whether in, whether we're in prison or free, whatever our condition is, we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength because it is that internal connection with God that actually makes us full in life, not the external realities. That's the truth. Now you had a very interesting influence on your life who was actually gone before you ever got an opportunity to sit down or have a conversation. Tell us about that influence and what was the key, um, the key takeaway you took from his life? Yeah, it was Ernest Hemingway. And, I, you know, they always ask that question. If you could have lunch with any person from history, obviously every Christian's going to say Jesus, but, you know, Jesus is not in history. He's still alive today. Right. There's a lot of historical figures we can learn from. And I call Ernest Hemingway a 20th century uh, Solomon because he lived this extraordinary life. And I opened the book talking about him. In fact, his very first book that, that became an international bestseller, The Sun Also Rises, I only learned later comes from Ecclesiastes chapter one. It's a, it's a direct quote. So there was this textual connection between Ernest Hemingway and, and Solomon. And then I also saw that he lived in the 20th century, this life of excitement, adventure. A lot of people don't know. He, he was involved in both world wars. He was involved in the, uh, the Spanish Civil War uh, Revolution, if you will. He was uh, patrolling for U-boats on his own ship in the, off the shores of Cuba during the Second World War. He survived two plane crashes. He was married and divorced four times. Um, a womanizer, obviously, a man with you know endless opportunities to enjoy life to the fullest. And in 1961, he takes a shotgun to his mouth and ends his own life in Idaho. Um, just a real sad story of how he went after everything that you could go after in life and still did not end up happy. Let's avoid that tragedy because we have, again, in modern day America, so many more opportunities than people just a century ago, heck, just 40 years ago had. So what are we going to miss out on if we don't nail this one in? We don't nail down that internal hope and fullness that is only available in Christ. And so he influenced the writing of the book. I spent the summer with him. I would also encourage people, if you've ever done this, pick an author and just spend a whole season with them. I wrote, I read three of biographies of his. One was 900 pages long. I read uh, four of his books. 
it was just a really intensive learning experience about who he was and how he speaks to us even today. Wow. Tim, we got about a minute left here with you, and uh, I want you to just let us know what is the way that we can truly find, what's the number one way that we can end emptiness and find happiness in Christ? Put Christ first. You, you, you've got to put Christ first. In, in, in my sermon on this book, the first part I start, I start off with the series on the, the uh, content from Ecclesiastes. I got jars, two jars on the stage. And then I have a big rock, which represents Christ, and then I have all these other ones, which represents all the secondary issues. And some of those secondary issues are very important things that we need in our lives, family, uh, community, uh, fun, recreation, oh, job. Well, those are secondary. If you put the smaller things in without getting the rock in first, that rock, there's no room. He can't get all the way in. You got to put Christ in first. You got to have Christ on the throne of your life and at the top of your priority list and at the center of your life and all the other things that you add to your life. In fact, God will add to your life. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. These things will be added to you. They're, they're going to find their connection to you around Christ. And that puts everything into perspective. It's not about avoiding everything in the world. It's about putting everything in the world that you could have in your life properly connected to you through Christ so that nothing else becomes the center and the ultimate end of your life. Christ is the beginning and the end, the author and the finisher of our faith. And without him, we're just empty pages. Amen. Tim, thank you Amen. so much for your time. We so appreciate you. They can tune in and see you Sundays at 10 a.m. Tim Hatch Live. God bless you, sir. And thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you, guys. Listen, stay with us because joining us next is Pastor Dave DiDonato and he is going to share with us how there is an urgent call for the church in this hour. You don't want to miss it. When you give to Cornerstone Television this month, we'll send you Encouraging Words for a Discouraging World by Dr. Jeremiah. Filled with encouraging and inspiring words, Dr. Jeremiah helps you navigate the difficulties of daily life with faith, courage, and resilience. He shares practical insights and timeless wisdom from the Bible that will help you find hope, comfort, and strength even in the darkest of times. This book includes biblical examples of hope that will inspire you during challenging seasons, inspiring teachings on how to claim victory even in the hardest of times, practical wisdom for holding God's promises in your heart. Whatever hardship you're facing, encouraging words for a discouraging world will help you find perspective, hope, and a renewed sense of purpose. Request your copy today as our thank you gift when you give to CTVN. To give, call 888-665-4483 or go to ctvn.org slash donate. Welcome to Dashing Dish. It's birthday month in the Farrell household. We're celebrating Maddie, Ollie, and my birthday all in the same month. And it would not be a birthday celebration without special food and treats. Make Cornerstone Network your home for the best in local Christian TV, bringing you programs like... You're going to find freedom. You're going to find healing. You're going to find a clear conscience. You're going to find ways that you're hearing God in the, in the ways you've never heard Him before. You hang in there. He's a God who never, ever lets us go, ever. We left the light on for you. Cornerstone Network is your home for Christian television. Welcome home. Our next guest is the lead pastor of the Bible Chapel, which has several locations throughout the Pittsburgh area. Pastor Dave DiDonato has seen God move in his life in tremendous ways. And he joins us now to share his story and his heart for seeing the church re-energize in the area of evangelism for our city. Pastor Dave, welcome to Unscripted Faith. Thank you, this is awesome. Thanks for having me on today. Yeah, it is. And we've got a surprise <laughs> we, to connect we you, do. which we'll get into. We could do a whole episode on we that. We really could, I couldn't believe it. We'll save you, <laughs> Pastor Jay. <laughs> you know, it's all good, go ahead and have at it. <laughs> so, Pastor Dave, yeah. you're doing tremendous things with the Bible Chapel. Thank you guys are all over the city. Yeah. Share with us a little bit of how you came into this role as a lead pastor yeah. of this phenomenal organization. Yeah, my, my journey is Proverbs 69. Man has his course yeah. mapped out in his heart, but God says, no, I, I determine the steps. So I was in sales. I was chasing the dollar. I knew I had a heart for ministry. 
But the Lord changed that about five years out of my undergrad. I got into college ministry. I was doing a lot of just lay ministry and I saw these college students just going away from the Lord. I said, we got to do something about that. So I got involved in that. And the Bible Chapel supported me to do college ministry on a few campuses in Pittsburgh. Over time, they said, will you come on staff? I said, let's do it. So I did student ministry for years. And that's right when our church started to plant churches in Pittsburgh. And they asked me around 2012, would you be a campus pastor? And my wife was doing ministry in Wilkinsburg, not far from here. And, and I said, if you want to go to the east end of the city, I'm in. So we planted our Wilkinsburg church in 2013, started with my wife and I and a couple college students. God grew that over five years to close to 200 people. Wow. And did uh, homeless ministry on Sundays, mentoring ministry at the Boys and Girls Club. We loved it. But again, God said a next step. So they, the elders asked me to be the associate pastor in 2018. Went back to our South Hills campus and then asked me to be the next lead pastor. And that was in January of 2022. And that's where wow. I've been. And I'm, I'm humbled to be in my role. My favorite two words in scripture is, but God, that's all, that's all he's done uh, for my almost 15 years with the chapel. So. Now, yeah. was it difficult? Because you said you were chasing after the dollar. Was yeah. it difficult to leave what you were doing yeah. and make, even though I know you, you can get spiritual about it and say, yeah, well, you know, Lord, whatever thy will is, but sometimes <laughs> that will is difficult. Yeah. I always say people out of college want to go up the corporate ladder. Yeah. God took me down okay. yeah. because he had to humble me. And I told, I went from a very good salary company car, turned all that in, had wow. to raise my money. And I was wow. at most joy and peace because I was finally walking in the will that God had for me. My dad's a pastor. I was preaching when I was 16. I saw, I was like, there's not much money over there. I'm going to go my route. And God said, no, 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 until you do things my way. So the moment I made that switch, complete peace and joy. And he, he's provided like he always has. But did mom and dad, because mom and dad were preachers, yeah. were they telling you the whole time, hey, man, that ain't where you're supposed to be. They, you're supposed they to be preaching knew. the gospel. They knew. <laughs> but my parents knew they, the same they way. They were smart. And that season, we're just gonna let him figure it yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. Good thing they did, because yeah. you did. Yeah. He led yeah. you down that path. So Amen. let me ask you right now, yeah. there is an urgent call yeah. and you're you're connected mm -hmm. with the Lord. And what is it that you're feeling through your connection with the Lord that yeah. he is asking of the church? Yeah, you know, a few things. The first thing is for believers in the church to be fully engaged. I yeah. think too many are, since COVID, are sitting on the sidelines. And I often say, you're not called to attend church. You are the church, be the church, get involved, serve, be in community. We're not me meant to be in isolation. That's what the enemy wants to do. Uh, and number two, we need to be urgent with the gospel. So yeah. last summer we, we did this series and I, I created gospel tracks for this. We did a whole series Urgent is actually an acronym for the series I did, which was a call to the church to be urgent with the gospel. And I even think with the election coming up in this season, I said the harvest is ripe. Yes. Jesus in Matthew 9 said, there are helpless and harassed people all around. That's what we find in the city of Pittsburgh. Yeah. And they are ready to hear about Jesus. So in the urgent gospel, I, I, I start off with the U. It represents unity that in John 17, I think people get nervous with evangelism because I think it's a solo sport. Jesus prayed that we would be unified. And when the church is unified, he says, then the world will know that you have sent me. That we do the role of evangelism together. Amen. Amen. And then we flow it out. So I challenged our church last year and I, I tried to check in on them that they had to share the gospel with one person a month. And as a church of, uh, you know, three, 3,000 plus people, I said, that's about 40 to 50,000 people in Pittsburgh who would hear Jesus if we just shared one wow. person on. a month. So we're in that journey right now as a church. You know, let me ask yeah. you, I want to digress a minute yeah, because yeah. you said something yeah. that I think uh, people might have just glossed over. You said with the election coming up mm -hmm. yeah. that the gospel, people are ready to hear the yeah, gospel. Yeah. Why is that? They are restless, anxious, and they're looking for security and they're looking for it in a presidential candidate, which you'll never find. So I've had personally conversations just in the past month with three people. One went one direction where I couldn't quite get there. The other two, they were ready to hear about Jesus because when they saw in me, I said, I take the election serious. I do. Yes. Yeah. And I'm not anxious at all. I have Come complete on. peace, Come on, joy Pastor. and security in the yes. person of Jesus Christ, That's right. not a candidate. And they want that. They yes. want yeah. that. So more than ever, I, you don't have to go down some long road. You, you People are ready for that yeah. and you can share Jesus. And the, the beauty is, uh, you know, part of this um, series, the E and urgent is empowered, that it's the spirit of God who empowers us to share and transforms the life. 
And I always refer to Paul. Paul, We think Paul was some like spiritual gladiator. He wasn't. In 1 Corinthians, he says, I came in weakness and trembling, but he still shared Jesus. So there's nervousness that comes to sharing the gospel, but don't let that impede you. Let the Spirit of God work through you. And the harvest is ripe. The harvest is ripe. I love that flip in perspective because I do think that a lot of people were still cowarding in since COVID Mm -hmm. and not wanting to touch, you know, but this is the hour they can receive. They need him. This is it. hundred percent, hundred percent. And part of it is not being prepared to share the gospel. So. Uh, I don't want to go through the whole acronym. No, please. Oh, yeah. We Take are suckers yeah, for yeah, yeah, yeah. acronyms. Right, I was going to ask Take you for that. Quickly. Yes. All right, so the, the U is unity, then we yes. do this together. R is responsibility. What I mean there is there is the gift of evangelism in Scripture, but every believer has the responsibility to share Jesus. Let's not lose that. Then G is grasp, and, th- and here's that. I think as believers, we've trusted in Christ, yes. but have we fully grasped the gospel? Does it dominate our life each day? I say every day the believer needs to wake up and preach the gospel to themselves again. Remind themselves of what has happened in their life because of Christ, which then outflows, right? Then E is empowered. We don't do this by our own power. It's the power of God's spirit within us. N is navigate, which means this. You need to have a plan on how you're going to share the gospel with people. You don't always get there, but we plan out our business plans, our financial plans. How do we not have as believers a clear plan of how we're going to share the gospel if it's presented? Wow. So in this track, I present one. And then T is trust. Trust that God is the one who's going to change that heart. You know, as Paul yeah. said also in 1 Corinthians, you know, I might just be watering the seed. He might use you or yes. someone else to help it grow. And trust that God's going to be the one who transformed their life. And just oh, now go nice. do it with those six things in mind and be urgent. You know, Pastor, yes. I think that's a great point. You know, I, you never think about like when you're evangelizing, you may not be the one reaping the harvest. That's you may it. be the one that's watering. So we shouldn't be discouraged because we may not know what season they're in. hundred percent. That's it. One of, all I say is bank on this. You were faithful. That's when right. you share Jesus, yes. even if that person didn't trust him at that moment, you were faithful and obedient mm-hmm. and go to the next person. Amen. Go to the next Come person. Come on. Amen. Amen. So good. <laughs> Listen, Pastor Dave, we have more with you coming yeah. up. So stay tuned with us as we sit down and discuss a little bit further and you'll get to see my personal connection with Pastor Dave. <laughs> stay with us. We'll be back in 60. We left the light on for you. Cornerstone Network is your home for Christian television. A place of rest. A beacon of truth. Your source of encouragement and entertainment. Welcome home. Thank you for joining us for Unscripted Faith. And we have Pastor Dave DiDonato here with us today. Pastor Dave, I have a question for you. What was the moment that God and faith became real to you? Yeah, great question. I think a lot of believers have this moment in their life, certain different times. Grew up in the church. My dad's a pastor. Assume I was a believer, right? I truly believe, though, I trusted in Christ as a child. But through my early junior high, senior high years in high school, I I just took everything at face value. Whatever the pastor said was true. And I wasn't in the word myself. So it was my junior in the senior year where a man of God I love, my senior high pastor, we, I heard some things and I was like, I just don't know if I feel that's true. So I yeah. dug into the scriptures myself. And we set up a coffee meeting. We had a discussion about a portion of scripture. We ended great. But that was a moment where I realized I got to own this. Yeah. Like I can't just assume everything being taught is from God. Now we have trusted leaders. But if I don't have a personal walk with the Lord and the word myself, that's not a way to go because I'm not always going to have that pastor with me. So that was the moment I feel like the Lord said, are you ready to own this or not? Like do this one on one. And that's when it took off from there for me. 
You know, I think it's real important that people have an encounter with God. That's a yeah. great way to put it. You know what I mean? Because yeah. that's, you know, you can learn about it. I was raised in a Christian home. Yeah. My parents prayed. I saw people touched by the power of God on my dad's yeah. ministry. Yes. But there's something about when you get a personal yeah. encounter with God for yes. yourself that makes him simply irresistible. Amen. Yeah, Amen. that's right. That's a great way to put it. Well, the, that's exactly <laughs> what happened. As I'm talking to Pastor Dave prior to, yeah. I'm like, we were together yes. when I had my encounter with Jesus that yeah. transformed wow. my life. Went wow. to the Brownsville Revival. Yeah. And he, there too? I yeah, was there. he was there with the right youth. after you, right? Or yes, the same trip right yes, there, yeah. yes. We still have to nail down all the details, <laughs> yes. but we were in the same place. That is yes. so cool. And it was transformational. Where it we're was. at today, we said a lot of people from that church and yes. that season are in ministry. Absolutely. And I always say this, though, it was a big part of the leaders that yes. we wanted we wanted to follow. We saw the fire of the Lord in them and said, wow. yes. I want that. A hundred percent. Yeah, we were out of um, Central Assembly down okay. in Houston, PA. Yeah. And I mean, there are probably at l over a hundred ministries that are strong and vibrant today yeah. as a result of that church and those leaders. They yeah. truly lived passionately. All over the world now. It's All amazing. over. What age were you guys in that time? We were in high school. Like right right senior. after that moment with me, 18 and then early, right before college. Yeah, yeah. junior, mm -hmm. senior. Do you think that there's a possibility that God had that move in those times? Times because of what he saw coming here and made sure that that encounter and that Come deposit on. was in people at that age so then it keeps us in the day and hour that we're in. God is a God of order yes. and sovereign and I have no doubt. I see so many things in my life and your yes. life from that moment that does not make sense but God, yeah. and including where he has us in the city now. There's times where I don't like the winter. I'm like, call me oh, yeah. south. Call me to Hawaii. But he said, yeah. no, yes. you're called to be in Pittsburgh yes. right now. And for this season, I say, your will has always worked better than mine. Let's yes. do it. So I, I, I absolutely believe this is all God's plan. Amen. Oh, that is awesome. Well, awesome. listen, before we get out of here too, uh, yeah. tell us a little bit more about Urgent Gospel and yes. how people can learn more about this. Yeah, one is if you're looking for a good gospel track, I'm not saying mine's the best, but I created one. That's awesome. There's this a Pittsburgh great. flavor yeah. to this actually too, that just, it's a guide to the gospel. So if you reach out to us, you know I mean? My, my name's on the back here. So ddonato at biblechapel.org or go on biblechapel.org, our website, reach out to us. I'll get you as many of these as you want. Come on. We'll print thousands. I don't care. We want, it, we want Jesus to get out there to our, to our yes. city. Also, we did a whole sermon series on this that okay. I did, a six-week series. Those sermons are on our website. I did a whole podcast series. We have a podcast called Let's Chat. Okay. I do it every other week. And we did a whole six-part series on our podcast too. So it's, it's all over our stuff. Okay. And again, Nothing to promote me, but if we can get the gospel out there and get you Let's fired go. up to share Jesus, tap in the urgent gospel. That'd be great. That's it. Yeah. Come on. Come it on. is Let's the go. urgent gospel. Let's go. Let's take this city, I right? Yeah, Let's amen. get after it. Amen. Man, what an awesome conversation. For like, real. And I love that you you experienced the Lord in a real way yeah. that took away all of your emptiness, like mm -hmm. we were talking about with Tim, yep. and now you're fueling others into their greatest purpose. Yeah, and We are so glad that you have taken time out to come uh, visit with us because you know what? I, I like you already, man. I know I just yes, met you today, yes. but you're my brother awesome. from another thank mother. Amen. So thank you for coming by Amen. and hanging out with us. Well, yes. thanks for having me on. And I'll just end with this. I always say this. You can go to a Steeler game. You can hit a hole in one on the golf course. There's no greater thrill, I believe, than sharing the gospel and seeing someone's life be transformed. There is no greater thrill in this life to share Jesus. So, thank so ladies you, and gentlemen, you've heard Amen. it. <laughs> Urgent gospel. Let's go out there and win the loss for Jesus Christ. We'll see you next time. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.